What's going on guys? It's Simo. It's been a while since we've done one of these, but it's time once again for the meta ahead. The series where we take a look over at the OCG to see what the best top performing decks are and to see how those decks might translate over here for us TCG players. So these articles are brought to us by Road of the King and there's a lot to talk about since we've last done one of these because uh, the OCG metagame is very interesting, quite the enigma. So this was the very first metagame report that was brought to us for the brand new ban list that they were undergoing. Going. As you can see, Tri Brigade, as a matter of fact, was doing well here at the top at 14% of the overall breakdown. Zodiac at 12, Eldritch at 9, Virtual World at 9, and then it starts getting into some of the other decks like Zephyr, Prank Kids, Thunder, and Dimian, Phantom Knight, Shadal, and a bunch of others. So as we scroll down here, UP went 7 0 and finished first in a tournament which had 30 participants. The current popular Tri Brigade build has been streamlined to focus on setting up Appaloosa, Bow of the Goddess, Ancient Warriors, Oath, Double Dragon Lords, and Tri Brigade revolt. Adding the Zodiac packages to Tri Brigade is getting popularity. Zodiac provides additional firepower in the form of Dryden and Divine Arsenal Zeus, Sky Thunder, greatly improving the odds when going second. Zodiac could be reached with Fire Formation Tanky and could be used to test the water before following up with Tri Brigade Karras. So if you guys have never seen just like more of like a pure Tri Brigade sort of deck, I mean this one is playing the uh, Zodiac so I guess it's not that pure, but I think for us TCG players we're very used to seeing something similar in line to the Liralus Tri Brigade strategy, and while that deck's main win condition is to set up some more Bird of Divinity and summon a Barrier Statue of the Stormwind, the more traditional version of this deck actually plays a little bit differently. So I actually have a few combo videos to showcase for you guys just to demonstrate how some of these cards work. So this first combo is just using a Tri Brigade Fractal as well as a copy of Gamma. In this case, this could be any card. The Gamma is here to just showcase that as dead as Gamma can be, this is a card that you can use because it can be absolutely anything. So we're going to start by firing off the Fractal that will allow us to get rid of it and send it to the graveyard to dump a copy of Kit. Then when Kit hits the graveyard, that's going to trigger as well and dump ourselves a copy of Nerval. Now, Nerval also has an ability when it's sent to the graveyard, and that allows us to add a Tri Brigade monster from our deck to our hand, except another copy of itself. So we're going to go ahead and add ourselves a copy of Karis with that effect. We can then normal summon the Karis, fire off the effect to allow us to go into the extra deck by banishing some of our Beast Beast Warriors or Winged Beast and cheat out out some of our Tri Brigade cards, or I guess any of the aforementioned types as well, because we will be doing that a little bit later. And we're going to go into a brand new Link monster that we're going to be receiving here in Lightning Vortex, Tri Brigade Bear Bloom, the Solid Assault. So it's a Link 2 monster, 1700 attack. If you've never seen this card before, it requires any two Tri Brigade monsters. The first effect says you can discard two cards and target one of your banished level four or lower Beast Beast Warrior Wing Beast monsters, special summon it. That's pretty good. I mean, you're taking a pretty big minus, but you do get to special summon something that will come up for a later combo, as you'll see here in a moment. If this card's sent to the graveyard, however, this is the effect that's much more important. You can activate this effect. You cannot special summon monsters for the rest of this turn, except Tri Brigade monsters. Also, add one Tri Brigade spell or trap from your deck to your hand, then place one card from your hand on the bottom of the deck. You can only use each effect of this card once per turn. So for this combo, we're solely just going to be using that second effect here, because we're going to link off the Bear Bloom and the Karis, and go into a copy of Rugal the Silver Shell. This is one of the links in the Tri Brigade archetype that doesn't get used too much, but for the purposes of this combo, it's actually not too bad. So this is going to trigger our Bear Bloom here, and we're going to be able to search ourselves a copy of Tri Brigade Revolt. Now, if you've never seen this card before, I wouldn't be too surprised, but the new Link monster makes Revolt much stronger. So when the card is activated, you special summon a number of your Beast Beast Warrior and or Wing Beast monsters that are banished and or in your graveyard, but negate their effects. Then immediately after this resolves, Link summon one Tri Brigade Link monster using only those monsters, you can only activate one Tri Brigade Revolt per turn. So I would say this is like a soul charge, but you're not keeping the monsters on the field for very long because you're actually immediately linking them off. So from this particular state here, we're actually just going to set the Revolt and pass the turn. We do have to put the card back on the bottom of the deck to finish fulfilling Bear Bloom's effect, and then we're just going to pass the turn here. So then during our opponent's turn, we can fire off the Revolt and we can special summon four of our monsters because we have four different Tri Brigades that are in our graveyard or banish. And then we can immediately link all of those off and bring out the big boy himself, Ominous Omen Shurag. Now, Shurag's really cool because when it's special summoned or another Beast Beast Warrior Wing Beast Monster special summoned, you can banish one card on the field. So at a very minimum, with this effect, you're going to be able to just banish something on your opponent's field at a somewhat spell speed to speed, let's say, considering Revolt is a trap card. Now, what's interesting here is that we're also going to have the effect of the Nerval trigger as well during the opponent's turn because we can 
now use it since it was sent to the graveyard once again to add a new copy of Fractal. And then Rugal's gonna come in here because during your opponent's main phase as a quick effect, you can special summon a level four lower beast beast warrior wing beast monster from your hand, but negate its effects and return it to the hand during the end phase. So not only do you get the banish off of Shurag the first time it's summoned, you could use Rugal's effect to quick effect special summon the Fractal that was added off of the uh, Nerval, and then during the end phase, it'll actually go back to the hand if it survives. So if two banishes during the opponent's turn is enough to stop them, you get Fractal back to hand, and you could just repeat the combo again, and let's be honest, you're probably going to kill them. So that's the very first combo. Again, just a single copy of Fractal, as well as any other card in your hand, will get you two interruptions effectively during the opponent's turn. The second combo is very similar, but there is going to be a key difference here, considering we have four cards in hand instead of just two. And you might see where this is going if you read Bear Bloom carefully. So the beginning of this combo is going to look very identical. We're going to activate the Fractal to pitch it to send a copy of Kit. Kit's going to activate and send Nerval, and Nerval is going to add Karis once again. This part is exactly the same. We're going to normal summon the Karis, fire the effect, and we're going to banish exactly for the same monster, the Bear Bloom. But the difference here is we can fire Bear Bloom's effect specifically this time, the first effect, to discard two of these dead cards in our hand to bring back one of our banished monsters. In this case, is going to be Kit. Then from here, we can link off the Bear Bloom, the Kit, as well as the Karis, and now we can go ahead and grab ourselves an Appaloosa with three negations. So that's already pretty decent, but we're not done there because Bear Bloom was linked off, so we get to use that effect to add a Tri Brigade spell or trap. We're going to get Revolt once again. We can just set the card and pass. We have to put the other card on the bottom of the deck to finish Bear Bloom's effect. Then during the opponent's turn, we can Revolt once more. We can bring the Shure Egg out once again, and you're going to see something very similar that we saw the first time. Yes, we don't have the Rugal to be able to get the additional normal summon, but in exchange, we get the Appaloosa, which is going to give us three other effect negations on top of it. So this board, yes, it did require us to use four cards, but let's be honest, only one of them actually had to be something specific. The other three could have been literally anything. You're also going to trigger the Nerve Hall here and actually get a copy of Fractal to hand as well. And so when you look at it all together, you've got a follow-up play for next turn in Fractal. You've got the card that is banished off of the Shurag, and then you also have three negations in Appaloosa. That's pretty decent. And then we're going to wrap up this little combo demonstration here with another combo. It's very similar, but this is with opening Fractal and Karis specifically, as well as having any two other random discards. So we're going to use the effect of Fractal. Once again, this very this first part is always going to be the same. You dump the kit, you dump the Nerval, you add the Karis off of the Nerval's effect. We're going to normal summon the Karis. We're going to activate the effect. We're going to banish our uh, monsters, and we're going to get a copy of Bear Bloom once again. Again, this is all the same. We're going to use Bear Bloom's effect, but this time we can actually ditch the Karis as one of our cards specifically here. I guess it doesn't necessarily have to be Karis, but it does have to be a Tri Brigade specifically for this to work because the next thing we're going to do is here is use that effect to get back the kit. Now we can use Kit's effect on field. Since we have enough monsters in the graveyard, we can actually banish again. We're going to get rid of the Karis and the Fractal, and we're going to get ourselves a copy of the Link to Ancient Warriors Oath Double Dragon Lords to give us a bounce in addition to everything else that this board can create. Because as you can see, this is similar to the second combo because now we're going to link off the Bear Bloom, the Karis, and the Kit. Go for the Appaloosa for three, and then we're going to search the Revolt off the Bear Bloom's effect. We're going to put the Gamma on the bottom, and just like that, we once again have a way to go to a Link 4, but this time we have the Appaloosa, and we have the copy of the Ancient Warrior's Oath, which then allows us to bounce a card back to our opponent's hand in addition to banishing a card with Shureg and also getting three effect negations from the Appaloosa. I think these cards are just very efficient and the way that they're able to utilize their abilities just because the revolt is able to then recycle the monsters as well. So on your following turn, remember, you're still going to get to search the Fractal for the effect of Nerval once again. You have the follow-up and you have the board that's very difficult for your opponent to deal with. You also already have a loaded graveyard on top of it all. So the efficiency to which these cards work cannot be understated. These are just some of the bare basic combos here, but I think this helps demonstrate the power that Tri Brigade Bear Bloom, the Solid Assault, can actually have for the deck. And I think that might be why you've seen this archetype splash with others and not really as a standalone deck up until this point, just because I feel like being able to search revolt specifically is key for this strategy. So let's quickly go back now. Again, we can take a look here at the OCG's equivalent. Obviously, their card pool is extremely different. They have Maxi, they have Crossout Designator. There's just cards that they have that are different than ours in terms of the Forbidden and Limited list. But this could very well be a template for a different version of the deck that we could play here for us TCG players. And a lot of the time, these decks in the OCG can translate very well here in the TCG, so this may be something in a post-Lightning Overdrive format that we may
may expect. So going down to the side deck here, again, just a bunch of other good hand traps and just good stuff to deal with anything the opponent may throw at us. Bunch of lightning storms as well. We'll talk about that a little bit later because that will come up. There's also Zodiac here as well. Shu Chan went 6-2 and finished second in a tournament with 33 participants. The Rise of Tri Brigade saw infinite impermanence being brought back into the main deck. Using infinite impermanence to negate the second effect that special summons from the extra deck is the most direct method to disrupt Tri Brigade. And Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion is also useful for negating Tri Brigade Revolt. So I'd say those are the two big takeaways here is that if Tri Brigade does start becoming a more meta threat post Lightning Overdrive, you can know that you can bring in infinite impermanence, you can bring in Ghost Bell, and those cards are going to be reasonably effective against the strategy. Here's just a quick look at a pure Zodiac deck. This deck doesn't do too well here for us TCG players, but uh, it does very well in the OCG, so here we are. Then we also have Eldritch in the OCG. Gorosu went 8 and 1 and finished second in a tournament with 54 participants. Torrential Tribute, Paleozoic Dinomicious, and Paleozoic Canadia are effective against Tri Brigade by picking off the Tri Brigade monster before the second effect is able to activate. Remember, that's the one where they can special summon from the extra deck. So having a sort of reactive way to stop the effects before they are able to activate, because remember, they are ignition is very key here. Torrential's always been a big blowout. Dinomicious goes in and out of formats, and Canadia being a Book of Moon is actually very good, especially because the Tri Brigade seem to be very uh, just regular effect monster centric because you're bringing back a lot of those monsters and those are getting the big guys out to the field. So Canadia kind of makes sense. They're useful for picking off Zodiac monsters to deny Xe summon plays, and they're also useful to pick off virtual world monsters so they can't target them to special summon virtual world monsters from the hand. So this is just like your typical good stuff control deck here in Eldritch. I actually featured recently a trap version deck that I, was, that I would say is very similar to this, but it's definitely slimmed down on the Eldritch cards and is way more in on trap cards that pack piloted. I'll have a link up in the top right corner or down in the description or pinned in a comment so you guys can check that out because that deck is insane and did incredibly well most recently in one of the extravaganzas. And I think you guys would have a lot of fun trying that deck out online. But we've seen decks like this before. I mean, they have three skill drain in their format, which is just absurd. And I think makes Eldritch way better over there than it does over here. And then we have Virtual World still going strong in the OCG because guess what? They still have Calamities. I believe it is just limited. Pluto went five, two and one and finished second in a tournament with 30 teams or 90 participants. As Calamities became limited, the initial choice was using 75 Bamboos and Gossip Shadow as a replacement. However, Gossip Shadow requires detaching two Xyz materials to activate its quick effect, meaning that it's a mostly one-time usage. Its effect only changes the activated effects and does not destroy the monster. Against Nibiru and Gamma, they would remain in hand, and the opponent could use them again on the next turn for Nibiru, or again on the current turn for Psyframe Gear Gamma. Using Ultimai Zulkin to special summon Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon is gaining popularity as an alternative choice as it provides better negation effects that could be used once per turn, and also destroys the monster on top of it. The Zulkin thing is nothing new. We've known that the Zulkin play is a line that Virtual World is capable of doing. Obviously, Calamities is the line that everyone wants to do, but as a backup, also too, you can go into the Zulkin before the Nibiru in the fifth summon. I believe Crystal Wing Dragon can be your fifth summon, so that way Nibiru does not become an issue. And if you're able to summon the True King of All Calamities at that point, I mean, you're probably just going to win the game. So let's go ahead and move on to the next metagame breakdown. This was the following week, so this is the 3rd and 7th of April. And again, look, Tri Brigade still at the top here at 12%, Zodiac at 10 Thunder Dragon coming up a little bit here at 8 along with Virtual World. Let's get into the good stuff. Chogedoksu went 8-1 and one and finished second in a tournament with 151 participants. Man, I wish we could have that many people actually play Yu-Gi-Oh! once here in the States. That would be wonderful. Triple Tactics Talent is a strong tech choice in the current metagame. It could be activated against Appaloosa, Ancient Warrior's Oath, Zodiac Dryden, and running one Triple Tactics Talent in the main deck enables Crossout Designator to negate it. Now, again, this is something that doesn't really pertain to us TCG players. We still don't know when we're getting a Crossout Designator it has not been announced yet. Honestly, at this rate, I think it may just be a Megatin promo because let's be honest, that would be probably one of the best game warping Megatin promos they could have. Tri Brigade Ferigy and Tri Brigade Bear Bloom second effect. Each draw one card or add a Tri Brigade spell or trap from deck to hand via their effect, then place a card from their hand on the bottom of the deck. This could be used to place single copies of tech cards such as Triple Tactics, Talent, or Infinite Impermanence back into the deck to re-enable Crossout Designator to negate them. This is one of those cool things. So not only can you put back something such as a Cyframe driver if you don't want to have that in your hand and get a new card off of that. If there's a card you have that may not fit a particular situation, then guess what? You use the Fair Jeter, the Bear Bloom, you put it back, you get a new card in exchange. And uh, especially if you're changing that card out for a revolt, I think that's a pretty fair change. I like the Zodiac little component here because it gives the deck much stronger viability going second and just allows it to have a little bit more oomph because you're playing cards such as Zeus and Dryden in addition to everything else. It also allows you to maybe bait out some cards with one half of the deck and then go into the other 
other half of the deck depending on how the way things play out and so i like that i think that's better than just going pure pure but that's just the way things are in the ocg as it seems uh, next up is just pure zodiac ryu went 6-2 and finished fourth in a tournament with 55 participants and then 6-0 including a buy and got first place in a tournament with 31 participants running asa in the extra deck as an out to contact c the popularity of zodiac tri brigade and zodiac in the current metagame also makes asa useful for special summoning a zodiac monster from the opponent's graveyard which can then be used to exceed summon your own zodiac exceeds monsters you could also then by extension go into zeus if you're playing that as well this is something we saw once zodiac eldritch was super super popular that people were using asa to steal their opponent's zodiac monsters get their half of their deck online and just kind of kickstart their engine a little bit yabo went eight no with thunder dragon and finished first in a tournament with 60 participants running two mind control in the main deck i believe it's limited here so we can't do that another tech option in the current metagame as an answer to appaloosa dryden and zeus mind control is a more risky play compared to the other choices such as triple tactical talents and infinite impermanence since it does nothing when going first but it's much likelier to resolve successfully as the opponents are only running triple tactics talent and infinite impermanence solely for cross out designator man the meta behind cross out designator is insane and i really can't wait till we get that card here in the tcg because there are a lot of mind games when it comes to that card in particular here's the thunder list though thunder's not really too viable here for us tcg players because colossus is banned but you know it's the ocg so it is what it is and then moving on down to our final deck here for this report it is virtual world su feng wei went 9-0 and finished first in a tournament with 122 participants over in taiwan congratulations gamma's heavily played in the current metagame with many decks running the full three copies of the main or side in his tournament report he mentioned that he would side out gamma for triple tactics talent if the opponent has seen it in game one and thus is going to play around gamma however there are certain matchups such as shadal dragon made virtual world eldritch where the opponent is likely to be running cyframe gear gamma he would keep the gamma in the main deck when going first for cross out designator just the mind games here just the amount of depth that you can see that these players think about how the opponent is going to respond to the specific cards that they're playing that's when you're really getting to the much higher level of Yu-Gi-Oh, and that's what i absolutely love to see it's truly fantastic i'll quickly flash up the list here for anyone who wants to see and just when you thought we were done no we still have one last report to cover and that is the most recent one metagame report 2 and look at tri brigade's dominance in this report 27 percent of the breakdown tri brigade we still got zodiac bringing up the rear virtual world up as well as eldritch shadal code talker drytron and thunder dragon still just barely eking out so let's talk more tri brigade Zhao on went 902 and finished first in a china tournament which had 245 participants i love it i absolutely love it tri brigade's main threats are appaloosa ancient warriors oath and tri brigade shurag the ominous omen special summon by revolt they can negate monster effects return a face-up card to the hand and banish a card on the field as they have no negation against spell cards using lightning storm to destroy monsters triple tactics talent and mind control to take control of the monsters or dark ruler no more to negate all monsters is becoming one of the popular methods that the opponent could utilize to break the tri brigade's opening board hence when going first tri brigade may side imperial order and anti-spell fragrance to protect their opening this is also something that you see combo decks do a lot just because they know that their board is already strong enough but could lose potentially to one of these big blowout cards such as lightning storm such as evenly match and the like and so you might see them play stuff such as anti-spell fragrance such as imperial order such as solemn judgment sometimes just to have all of their bases covered the decks haven't really been changing all that much just a few cards here and there this is actually more of a pure build this one isn't playing any of the zodiac surprisingly playing the uh, draco tangy berserker in the extra deck i see that's kind of cheeky and then for the uh, side deck here we have the imperial order the anti-spell fragrance some lightning storms of your own so that way if you play the mirror match you can just blow them out that way so that is pretty nice Hudong kuan ying went eight and two and finished third and fourth in another tournament with 245 participants for zodiac tri brigade cross out designators their main counter against spell and trap cards one advantage they have is that they run the same cards with tri brigade and zodiac so cross out designator could be used to negate fire formation tanky zodiac barrage and tri brigade revolt this is the thing when it comes to cross out designator so many people are focused on the hand trap aspect but especially like in mirror matches this card can get nasty because you're going to be playing all the same cards as your opponent most likely and that gives the card way more versatility and way more utility in those specific matchups and that's why it's going to become a staple in the format just because of how strong of a card it truly is so this is the actual zodiac tri brigade list this was more of the pure one but this one is still playing the zodiacs i think this one's playing whiptail ram ram and rap here i think the other ones might have been playing thoroughblade but they're very similar you're just swapping some cards out for the zodiac cards and that's perfectly fine the extra deck looks nearly identical to what we've seen thus far and again we've got the lightning storms we got imperial order just all these one-ofs in here as well and that's another cool interesting thing about that card is that you're able to just side a bunch of one of cards that your opponent may have and then your 
crossed out designator can take those cards out as well. Zodiac is up next. Su Qinghua went 8 0 and finished second in a tournament with 1,199 participants. The Spring Duel Festival 2021. That is insane. Congratulations to him. Zodiac's main threats are number F0, Utopic Future Dragon, Zodiac Dragon, and Divine Arsenal Zeus. They can negate monster effects, destroy face of card in the field, or send all other cards from the field to the graveyard. Similar to Tri Brigade, Zodiac have no negation against spell cards, and these matchups should all could use their fusion spells to generate a good amount of card advantage. Other than using Macro Cosmos and Imperial Order against should all fusion spells, Retaliating C and Dimensional Barrier are also good counters, being able to be used in other matchups, such as Retaliating C against Virtual World and Dimensional Barrier against Zodiac Mirror matches, is an important consideration in the current tight side deck allocation. I mean, just the amount of metagaming going on here is brilliant. I really wish we were like the OCG and could play three copies of Macro Cosmos. I think that would allow for a lot more interesting decks to be able to flourish, but alas, we cannot. That's going to wrap it up, though. I mean, that was a lot all for one video, and I really hope you guys learned something from this because I seriously think that this Tri Brigade deck could become a contender for us in the TCG. The efficiency to which the cards work with one another and allow you to recycle your engine and just really get everything online, it's very minimal investment for very big payoff. And yes, while the boards may potentially be easily broken through a bunch of spell cards, I feel like the TCG players will find more ways to make the deck even more degenerate. And who knows, maybe soon enough, we will have a new contender in the April and soon to be May 2021 metagame. We'll just have to see. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. I'd really love to hear your thoughts. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Be sure to like the video as always. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh content. And if you found this video informative, consider supporting me on Patreon for exclusive early one day access to both the Yu-Gi-Oh progression series and the history of Yu-Gi-Oh. Thanks so much again, and we will see you next time.